Well, the you know the challenge, the big difference is the um, is that you must face by yourself uh, all the problems around. Um, when you are assistant coach, you just you you just feel like part of the the big team, and 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 you answer and you give all the proposals and 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 uh, all the suggestions to the to the manager. Uh, like a manager, you must face yourself with everything. You you must take all the decisions and you, you must listen to everybody, all the opinions and and after try to 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 find the, the best option. Well in the modern football you before we you accept to, to be in charge like a manager, you already know everything about the team, about the players. Uh, well, everything, everything, we just know after to start to start working with them. But anyway, you have a, a clear picture about the, the, the team level and the player's capacity. Um, but imagine that you don't know anything about the team and you just go in charge and start training and you don't know it at all what kind of system you, you, you should start with. Um, just my advice is just don't, don't, lose, don't lose any time with the uh, 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 things that uh, are not the, 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 the most important things in football. So try, try the, all the options and, and follow, follow the voice that come inside you. You know, because around you, like a manager, you have a lot of people trying to help, you know, with good intention. Uh, but the most important voice is the voice that you listen inside you. The football is, is really beautiful and you can feel the maximum passion for 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 the football, but um, to survive in this um, in this world, like a managers, we must win. So, if you if you don't care what kind of players you have in front of you, that you must help them to to perform well, uh, and you just follow your ideas, and you don't care at all. What, what kind of persons you have, what kind of capacities that your players have. And you just follow your ideas. It's like that. And I, I don't change anything. I, it's my philosophy. Uh, you are near to fail. You know, it's very near to fail. Because we cannot, we cannot forget like a manager that we can help them to play better. We can help them to perform better. But we don't play. They will play. Uh, so if... If you think that you can play the game, you are you are very near to to be sacked. So my advice in this situation is use the players properly, the players that you have. Uh, try to to help them to give you the the best um, answer on the pitch, um, and if it's possible, follow your philosophy. If if they are able to accept the footballers that they are, accept the capacities that they are. If for any reason they are not able to do something that your philosophy demands, try to change something, adapt, adapt your philosophy to the players that you have. No, at least once a week um, we have... Um, we have one section, one, one training session per, per week, um, just exactly to, to help them to improve their, their weakness points, their weak points. So um, we are, for example, if you, if you have a midfielder with problems in the long pass, you, you can make analytic training with this player and uh, if you have a striker uh, with problems in 
with the crosses or the finishing or you know with the right foot or left foot or um, this kind of analytic exercises and we 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 help them if i mean individual things individual things if we talk uh, about the uh, any weak point regarding the team we we use the the normal training the normal uh, uh, weight plan to to help the team to be better in that point. If it's individual thing, a technical thing, special the technical thing, we we use some um, more analytical. Of course, you have always uh, football um, goals uh, in, in our exercises, but um, but we, at least once a week. Well, thank you, Chris. It was a really, uh, it was really a pleasure to, to be part of the uh, Reading family, and and I will keep this forever in my heart. The way that you treat me and uh, uh, the fantastic uh, moments that uh, I lived over there. I'm really happy when I talk with someone from there. Actually, this happened two weeks ago in Madeira Airport. Uh, when uh, a, a couple came to me and, and talk about trading in a very enthusiastic way. Um, so it will be part of my life forever. Um, so, yeah, it's true that I I tried a lot of different approaches in, in, in reading um, because the, the moments that I lived over there, the... the and when we looked to the table, um, we just needed to, to survive. You know, if I followed just if I just followed my philosophy when I arrived in Reading, um, we couldn't survive. So we must recognize our weakness. If I could uh, pick all my players, we could see a team start playing from behind. Doesn't matter the system. You know, if it's with three defenders, four defenders. This is not the most important thing. The, the important thing is the dynamic that you give to the system with the players that you have. And 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 so I, I will tell you about my my main ideas and 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 you can you can use a lot of different systems to to show these ideas on the pitch. Um first of all uh, I, I I I would like to talk to start talking about the goalkeeper. Um, it's very important um, to to bring one goalkeeper able to play with the feet, with good pass and good decisions. Because some goalkeepers have a fantastic pass, but when they are under pressure and when they have three pass lines and they must choose just one, um, they have problems. So we need to to choose uh, the right goalkeeper able to to play with your team. And in the modern football and the way that I like to play, the goalkeeper receives the ball a lot of times. Central defenders um, able to play, not just play the players that like to kick and run, you know, uh, able to take decisions that would pass. Um, fullbacks um, with very, very high capacity to go and come. Uh, to play wide, um, but with uh, strong criteria in, in the ball possession and, 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 and uh, the moment to choose the best pass line. Uh, one very strong defensive midfielder, but the same, able to play. You know, just if you pick it, uh, um, it's a main position in the way that I like to play. If you if you pick a, a, a defensive midfielder just because he's very strong, he we know the challenge with body to body with a uh, with a head, uh, and after when when he received the ball, he, he he cannot he cannot help your game. He cannot help your philosophy, and we lose the ball again because he miss all the passes. You can see my fullbacks play very very high. Um, giving solutions in, in in the wide sides in in, in our attack, um, 
the midfielders, um, doesn't matter if we play with two number eights or one number eight and one number ten, all the time asking the ball and help the team um, uh, building the, the, the passing game and the wingers and the striker creating travels to the, the open opponent defensive line. So this dynamic doesn't matter if you if you play with 3 5 we talk about numbers. The way the way that your players, the dynamic that your players give to the system is the most important thing. Your idea, what what you want to see your team doing during the 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 game and uh, how they how they try to 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 pass the challenge that the opponent put put front of you. So I want to see my team with intelligent players um, being patient with the ball and all the time making raptor movements to create problems to their de de defensive line. Defensively, if if I'm saying that I want to see my players, my fullbacks playing forward my team in the in their half uh, demands from our defensive transition a very very strong movement otherwise you are dead so you, you cannot look just for one side you must you must give the balance to the team to your game so in the moment that you lose the ball uh, with so many players in the opponent half playing and attacking you must be very, very strong in the defensive in the defensive transition. Um, I, I think it's a key point of the the balance that you can give to the team playing with this philosophy. Uh, when you are in the um, of a defensive organization, um, I created a, well goalkeeper plus seven. It's like I said uh, when I'm talking with my players, I, I tell them the 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 rule of seven players so we must as soon as possible even if you in the your defensive our defensive transition if we lose three players because they are very near of the opponent goalkeeper or they are very far to help the team to recover um we need to put these seven players in the right positions to to give the balance um to to be able to stop uh, any counter-attack and to close all the spaces to the goal. Sometimes it's not possible, but it's the, the most important goal in our defensive organization. So, um, Krish, um, I don't know if I, I completely answer to your question. Um, I hope so. If we talk about, if we talk about the system, maybe I will say, Four two three one or four three three, uh, but when we are in the attack and we look to to our backside, we see two central defenders, one midfielder, and all the others moving and creating pass lines and creating pro problems and travels to to the opponent side. Three things that I would like to mention uh, to answer to this question. First thing, during the week, uh, in the beginning of the week, so first meeting about our game, what we must improve and the things that we did well. Second meeting, in the beginning of the week, okay. Um, we have around six minutes of uh, very the important the most important pictures from from the opponent and we talk about the opponent and in the last meeting the last meeting not more than 10 minutes and when we talk to all the players you don't know exactly how they are emotionally i mean so i just talk about uh, it's like to remember the most important things regarding the tactical issues okay if it's if we need to give a, a strong uh, emotional uh, message a message with strong impact for that game that fit all the players 
it doesn't matter what kind of psychological profile of these uh, players, uh, a, a message that fits all the players, maximum 10 minutes. And after, individually, I talk with them, you know, separated. Look, you must do this, this, and some players I, I punch or I catch, you know, their shoulders. And some players I just put the hand in the shoulder. So separated, I talk with all of them. Sometimes you can do everything perfect during the week, but for some reason that you, 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 you didn't understand, the player didn't perform well, he was too nervous, his stress level is very high and he missed the balls, he missed thing, easy things that usually during the week he never missed. So it's very, very important to, to talk uh, with the players separated because the, the one speech cannot fit all the players. During the, um, the first half, I take some notes, some things that uh, for me are important. I feel that it's important to, to improve in the second half. Uh, tactical things, individual things. Uh, and before talking with the players, my analyst um, came downstairs from the stands and, and with more tactical information, very clear things, just um, if the things are really important. Um, otherwise, I prefer that he doesn't say anything. <laughs> um, and when I talk with the players, I, I, I talk about... Um, the the tactical things that I, I i in my opinion we must improve and with the key information because in also in the, in that moment the players cannot cannot listen you to too much time last season when we played against um, sheffield united um, they play with three defenders, as you know. But um, to tell you the truth, I I I, I never uh, and I watched a lot millions of games. I never saw something like that because in some moments of the game, the the wing back with the ball and the central back making overlapping and asking the ball front of him, you know, very fantastic dynamic, very strong um, um, team movements and not, not, uh, not uh, easy to stop. They were very confident. Um, they, they did a, a great, great season. Uh, all the team, um, you know, they, they really played like a team. And the dynamic again, it's a it's a dynamic. You you can you can uh, study a lot of teams playing with three defenders, but you cannot. It's difficult to 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 see the movements that they did last season. Um, a lot of intensity in their movements, uh, of course, the capacity of their players, but the way that they play like a team, and all the players knew exactly the position that they should where they should be in the end of the action. Um, great, 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 great job from their manager. Great job. Uh, and in all my career uh, was the, um, the, the, the biggest challenge that uh, I had like a manager. I, I tried to fix it, but when minute, I, I think minute seven or minute 10, we were losing 2-0, 3-0. It's very difficult. Um, because when you when we talk with them again and you see their eyes looking to you, waiting for help, it's just in the half time that you have time for it. And losing 3-0 uh, against Sheffield United um, means that it's not impossible, but almost impossible to to turn the game and be again on the game to 
fighting for the three points. Um, so the um, the way the way that uh, if you play with four in the back, uh, doesn't matter if you play with midfielders or wingers, and but you you face a team playing like Sheffield United um, is is really interesting to um, is really in interesting to tactical the tactical challenge. If it's really interesting to see how how your players or how the teams face and the answers, the tactical answers that they give. When I arrived in the first se season, in the middle of, or just when start the Boxing Day, um, with 40 players in the squad and uh, no hope at all in the, in Everybody, board directors and, and players and fans and the spirit was we will be in the League One next season. It was a completely different challenge and um, and the players, they gave a fantastic answer. It were very important, the players that joined us in January and the way that we reduced the number of players in the squad. And with the players that we had, we during the season we changed a lot of times our system. Uh, I already mentioned this before, because we were in trouble, so we we must adapt and and save and put the club in the safe position. Uh, some games we played three five two. And just giving to Barrow and uh, Yakumite space to use their speed with uh, Ovi, Baker and, and Swift controlling the, the, the midfield with their quality. And some games, we assume the games, we control the game from the beginning and we, we press very high, we play in the opponent uh, half. So we change during the, the season, the first season. The second season, it was a completely different issue because um, if you remember we we couldn't um, we couldn't bring any player any new player because of our financial fair play issue um, so we talk about in eight nine players in the squad and we traveled to Spain for preseason uh, with uh, 13 or 15 under 23s players. And uh, when he returned in 10 days, we start the league. Uh, in the meantime, we receive another player. So um, it, it was a, a different thing. It's like you, you used your, your pre-season preparing the team with some players and you start the season with a different squad. Um, so we need... We need time to, to let them know each other, to let them adapt to my ideas and, and also to each other. Um, and we, we use also different systems and depending of the players that you could uh, use. But one important advice for the football family. It's very important the players that you bring to your team because uh, I, I think is the most important uh, step uh, like a manager is what kind of player do you want for this or that position? Is he able to play as you like, as you want, under your philosophy? Yes, bring. No, is better, don't bring. Even it, it can be a good player, but it doesn't fit your philosophy, so don't bring. the defensive corners, we use um, all the players to, to protect our goal. Of course, we must be prepared for the moment that we recover the goal. But during my experience, I already conceded goals uh, in my offensive corners. So, it's our corner. I try to use 
how this corner to to score and something wrong happened wrong happened and and the opponent used the space to score a goal so in the moment that i i have offensive corner i have always four players doesn't matter if the if the opponent does, doesn't put one player in the, the midfield line i have always two players in the back or three and if i put three in the back i put one out of the box or i put two players in the midfield line and two players out of the box so always four players ready to stop the counter attack so defensively i must think the same way so the opponent will try to score a goal in my goal so i must protect myself if i'm thinking in this moment more in the counter attack than in protect my goal i will give more space so you must put in the scale what you want right now i'm using the older players Uh, in in specific positions to protect our goal but we have three players that they are, they they are in the they have defensive missions but the our goalkeeper special when the goalkeeper catch the ball our our goalkeeper knows exactly where they will be if he catch the ball So in the moment that he catch the ball the goalkeeper has all the time pass lines different pass lines to start the counter attack so and we we practice this If you are a manager you you have 25 26 22 depends of the number of players that you have in your squad and we talk about 25 26 different worlds uh with different targets um and you must help them to 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 change or to adapt their target to the team target to the club target so you need to understand what they are thinking how you can manage this and at the same time you have in your technical staff five six seven assistants with different opinions that um daily they they suggest things to you with intention to help the football life is a fantastic world you know because ah, no logical seven eight persons working daily with the same players living the same problems they have completely different points of view and you are the manager and you must take decisions so if you ask me for example i, I have a, a physical education degree and I, i i i of course i did all the all the football coaches course um to to get um uh, wafer pro to to be able to to get a permission to work in the professional football but it's not a physical education degree that is the most important thing uh, but uh, is the the tactical knowledge the most important thing i don't think so is important very important to know the game everything about the game but it's very important to understand the best way to help your players perform better and you cannot help them if if they don't listen to you if if when each time that you talk means nothing for them so if you find um, um degrees or 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 some some way to get education in this kind of psychological things emotional things how to deal with these things how how can you help them the best way to help them to to think the same way 
when you have one problem, if, if all of them think they're different ways, you have a problem yourself. Um, will be the, um, the most important studies. The most strong experience um, that uh, I had in my career was when I work, worked in the amateur football as a assistant coach, as a manager in the youth. Um, it just is the, the place to learn is you know, smell the problems daily and, and, and try make mistakes, but be there, be there. So if, if you have the opportunity to work, doesn't matter where, you know, it, work in football, take decisions in the moment to, to choose um, exercise. You have a problem, you have a tactical problem and you think at home, how can I solve this problem? And you have, 20 exercises uh, after three hours thinking and watching the pictures, you created 20 exercises, but you just need to pick two for the training. Which exercise I will pick? Which exercise will be the best? You, you just have, you, you, can, you cannot call anyone or check in the Google or let me check which exercise I will, I will choose for for this training, you must feel it. And this feeling will be uh, as strong, as better as you experienced this before. So if you practice this, um, you will be strong, stronger like a manager. So you need to go to the, to the pitch. You need to go to, to the real world. And, and leave the football and leave the experience to take decisions, to listen to people, to deal with the players' ambition and problems. And, you know, you must go. So if, if you ask me, the most important thing to be a manager is, is, is be a manager. So it doesn't matter the level. After you try to develop yourself and be better daily, but you must be there. Real life is different. You, you deal with emotions, you deal with people. Uh, so if you want to be a manager and if you have the opportunity to, to go in your country or abroad, just go, just go, catch the opportunity. Hi, hey, Jose, I'm Carlos from Spain. Thank you for answering my question. The question is about your experience in England, going to England in terms of working in a new language, in a different language, and how do you deal with that? How do you deliver the session at the beginning when maybe you don't uh, speak properly English? And any advice to the coaches that want to go abroad, working in a different environment, working in a different language? And that's it. Thank you for answering my question. Well, I didn't speak uh, very, very good English in the beginning and now <laughs> my English is not good. Um, but one thing is a um, common language is a football language. Uh, if you if you have clear in your mind where do you want to go, uh, what is the path that you must follow, uh, if you have clear this in your mind, uh, the players will follow you. You know this is the most important thing. They will understand. Um, it's a big mistake if you think that the football players are not intelligent. They are really really intelligent. You want to go to England? Uh, if you speak English, <laughs> it, it will be a fantastic help. If you if you are not able to to speak English, you know that you will have a problem, and you need someone else to to translate your ideas. And it's never the same thing. Never. I had this experience in Saudi Arabia uh, with a great man uh, helping in in the translation, Egyptian guy. Uh, and after a few weeks, you, I realized that sometimes he didn't translate exactly what I said. So it's a problem. So, Carlos, if uh, if you plan is 
go to to England. But of course, of course, like a manager, if you go to work in England, in England, and, and you speak English, it's better for you, definitely. <laughs>